Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning back here again for another video. This is Son of Liberty. So one of the videos that I posted some time ago on my channel was called the Versus video. This is where I compared several different types of some of the most common um, holsters from Tier 1 Concealed, and I talked about some of the body types that I felt would be a great fit for that particular holster. Now, little did I know that the video would be as successful as it has. It's actually my third most watched video on my channel. So one of the things that I wanted to do is to actually make that video better. Now, because this video is going to be more detailed out of respect for your time, one of the things that I've done is I've added a breakdown chapter list in the video description. So basically, if you're looking for key information, uh, such as a particular holster, Maybe you're looking at different clip options based on your dress style, or you're just simply looking for more information on wedges. Based on the platform that you're watching this on, you'll simply click on the See More tab or the down arrow key, and that will bring up all the chapters as well as the appropriate timestamp. The first holster uh, that I want to compare is going to be between the Axis Slim and the Axis Elite. I'll actually bring the camera in here in just a moment and kind of show you a close-up of the variations of, of differences between these holsters, but I just kind of want to talk about the different body types that I feel that these are going to be best suited for. Now, disclaimer guys, just because you don't fit into this body type category um, doesn't mean that these holsters won't work for you. I kind of fit into my own category. Um, and so, you know, use this information, you know, with a grain of salt, but if you're completely unsure, this information is just simply a guide. So in regards to body styles, um, obviously there's a lot of different body styles out there, but the one that I think is going to be best suited for this particular type of holster, right? The Axis Slim, the Axis Elite is going to be people who are very tall, uh, typically very athletically built people, uh, very lean individuals, people who have um, you know long torsos, or perhaps even people who have um, short um, hip base, right? Or just a very narrow hip, okay? So think of uh, soccer players, right? A lot of the like professional soccer players or a lot of the soccer players I know are very short statue people. They have very short, narrow hips. Uh, but they're very lean, right? So they're very athletic. This is going to be a good fit for that body type, right? Um, but also to think long torso individuals, right? Very tall. A lot of people use the word lanky. I don't like that term, uh, but uh, very tall people with long torsos, basketball players, um, think swimmers, right? That particular type of body style, I believe is going to be a good fit for this particular type of holster. Now, taking a closer look at the differences between the Axis Slim and the Axis Elite, uh, there's actually quite a few. Now, one of the things that I do want to point out very quickly is that the hardware on this Slim is the older version. Uh, the hardware that's on the Axis Elite is the newer version of a hardware that you would get if you placed an order today. All right. Uh, obviously, that link will be posted down below as well. Uh, but let's talk about one of the big differences between these two is going to be the amount of flexibility. Um, and inward flexibility um, of the Elite versus the Slim. Now the Slim, uh, you can see it's very linear. It's got a lot of kydex here as well as shot cordage. Uh, compare, it's got more compared to the Axis Elite. Now one of the other differences is that you'll notice is that this one is more flat across where this one has a V-shaped cut to it, okay? Now what this is going to do is this is going to lend to more inward flexibility. So as you are walking, uh, perhaps you're squatting to pick something up or you're climbing up a ladder or into a vehicle or whatever the case may be, again, if you live a very active lifestyle, this one is going to be the, the best benefit for you, I think, because of how much flexibility this one gives you, especially inward, um, you know, over the Access Slim. This is the, as a matter of fact, I believe this is the most sold holster uh, that Tier 1 Concealed makes. Now, some of the differences won't be as obvious as some of the other ones, but uh, let's take a look here at the Access Slim. Uh, you'll notice that the tension screw is located on the top or on the outside of the magazine carrier, where the tension screw on this one uh, is located on the back. Now, by doing so, they've actually slimmed the magazine carrier uh, down ever so slightly, but they've also given it, uh, giving it an outward cant. So if I was to take the hardware off the slim and put this directly on top of the um, slim here, you'll notice that the Elite has a different angle to the magazine carrier, okay? Uh, this obviously is going to aid in just a slightly better, more natural uh, reload, uh, and again, just aiding in those uh, natural uh, body biomechanics. Now, one of the other benefits of the Elite over the Axis Slim 
is what I like to call reinforcement ribs. Okay, now you'll you can see some of them there ever so slightly, uh, and you can also see some of them here. Okay, these are where there are going to be the most amount of stress on the actual holster itself, uh, and you'll notice that the slim version does not have those uh, reinforced ribs. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean that if these fail from a manufacturer's defect uh, that they're not going to honor that. They absolutely will. Uh, these have a lifetime warranty against any type of manufacturer's defects, okay? Um, but again, this is just for the more active lifestyle, maybe the people that are just more harder on holsters and so forth. Um, and one thing I do want to mention is if you have one of the older style of claws, right? Uh, this one actually has a plate system. So for example, um, maybe you get this out of the box, you go to put your gun in, you put it on, and you feel like that there's too much pressure of the gun pushing into the abdominal wall. You simply just take the screw out, take a, you know, a plate or two off, reinsert the screw, and now you don't have as much pressure um, of the belt, um, you know, up pushing this into your actual abdominal wall, and obviously it's just gonna lend in more comfort. So again, uh, you can really custom fit not only the width uh, and how much pressure is being applied to the actual gun itself against the um, belt, uh, but you can adjust these um, up or down just by loosening the screws uh, and obviously giving you that absolute perfect fit. Now the next holster we're gonna be discussing and comparing is gonna be between the Aegis and the Aegis Elite, right? Again, I'll bring the camera in here in just a few moments and we'll talk about and I'll show you a close-up of the differences between the two. Now, I've actually got more experience with this particular holster than any other holster from Tier 1 Concealed. So in regards to body types, for this particular holster, I am going to recommend people who have uh, wider hips uh, or people who have, quote, the tactical tummy, right? Um, another body type uh, or personality, if you will, for this particular holster might be a good fit are people who are indecisive about what they wear or change their attire on a regular basis. So let me dig into that for just a second. So uh, perhaps you wear a suit and tie or a blazer with a dress shirt uh, to work every day, or maybe that's your attire on Sunday. Uh, but in the afternoons and on the weekends, you're rocking board shorts, uh, you know, a t-shirt and some reef flip flops. This would be a good fit for you because you can actually break these apart, run them independently, right? Um, and then when you go back to your more relaxed, you know, type of attire, you can put them back together and run your, um, you know, your gun and your extra magazine. Um, you know, you can run an appendix together, or perhaps you're just going down the road to pick up some fast food, perhaps just want to run the gun independently. Uh, you can absolutely do that. So this one has a lot more flexibility in regards to options. Um, than its predecessor or than the Axis um, system, okay? Now, in regards to people who like to carry off-body in regards to bags, this may also be a good fit for you. Uh, so let, let me actually grab a bag here and I'm gonna demonstrate. All right, guys, so this is part of the video where you are required to use your imagination. I hope that it is as big as mine is, right? So what I've got right here, uh, I've been toying with the ideal of building a uh, quick response bag or a quick response kit. Um, that I just keep in my vehicle uh, with just a variation of different things. Uh, this is actually called a 511 two banger. I just removed the front um, emblem off the front because it was too large. But um, anyway, I digress. So imagine if this is a Vertex sling bag or uh, some other type of messenger bag or a backpack that has a dedicated uh, firearms pocket that you, you pull around in order to draw your weapon, okay? The benefit to the uh, Aegis system, obviously, is it gives me the ability to separate these two pieces or two components, but I have now the ability to uh, lend aid to just biomechanics, right? So let me explain. If you have no experience drawing or deploying from a bag, it's not gonna do me any benefits, biomechanically speaking, if I have these joined together and I just slide this down in there as a whole and attach it Velcro-wise or whatever the case may be. So it, perhaps drawing the gun is more efficient, but if I have to go to a reload and I had to reload from this pos particular position here, it's gonna be very uncomfortable and very awkward for me to draw or, or to pull that magazine out in this uh, position, okay? Versus if I now separate these two and I have the room that I can put this and mount it in a different angle. Now, once the firearm is drawn, if I need to draw the magazine, the, the magazine is seated in a much more 
biomechanical efficient position uh, that's just going to make my reloads more effective and quicker. Okay, so again, this uh, again may be a great benefit, um, you know, if you carry off body uh, or perhaps you carry in, um, they're called recon kits, uh, recon bags from Hill People Gear, um, the recon bags, right? This may be a really good fit for you. Uh, to carry just the firearm, okay? And maybe you can actually carry this just in your front pocket. All right, so again, you got a lot of different choices uh, and a lot more flexibility with this particular type of system. Now moving on to the close-up between the uh, difference between the Aegis and the Aegis Elite. Now, if you just watched the previous section of the differences between the Axis and the Axis Elite, the differences are gonna be completely identical other than how these actually are joined together. Um, obviously, this one has a different piece of kydex on it. I lost the uh, matching piece to this one. Uh, I was outside doing a photo shoot in the mountains, and I just left it there that night. I couldn't find it, and uh, so that's the reason why these have two different pieces. But So you'll notice that the retention screw here, um, the adjustment screw, is located on the front, where the uh, retention screw here is located on the back, just like the Axis Elite, okay? Obviously, that gives it a slightly slimmer design, and they've also canted the magazine carrier outward ever so slightly, which is just uh, simply gonna aid in reloads, okay? You'll notice that if I take these, uh, or the um, Aegis Elite, and put it on top of the Aegis, you'll notice that they do, uh, the magazines sit differently, and this one has a little bit more of an outward angle, all right? And you'll notice that this one sits more straight up and down, okay? So uh, as far as comfort in reloads, this one does um, give you a little bit more of an advantage. Next up, you'll notice that there is a concealment bar uh, located on this magazine carrier over the standard Aegis. Uh, this essentially, for those that aren't aware, it just is going to lend a more concealment um, of your actual magazine carrier. Um, I am going to re be repeating some things because some people may have come to this video just to look at the differences between these two and they may have not watched the previous section. So again, for those that have a, uh, you know, a particular body style where they have problems uh, concealing the magazine carrier itself, not so much as the gun, a uh, holster from tier one that has this particular concealment bar is definitely going to be something that you want to consider. Next up, you'll notice that there are some reinforced uh, kydex ridges here or ribs. Uh, there's not so much uh, over here because this is for a smaller gun. This is for a Glock 48, uh, but you can definitely see them located here. Um, and they are not located uh, or they don't come as part of the actual form for the uh, standard Aegis, okay? Again, it doesn't mean that this holster uh, will not last you a very, very long time. It just means that the um, Aegis and the Axis Elites are just built for more active lifestyle people uh, and people that are just possibly a little bit more rougher on their equipment because of their lifestyles, okay? Again, these are just giving the ability to, the ability to be able to reinforce uh, structural areas that have more of a uh, more likelihood to uh, suffer any kind of stress uh, fractures. So again, just something to keep in mind. So next up for discussion is the MSP Pro. Uh, now, Tier 1 Concealed just released a second version of this one uh, called the Pro Flex, all right? So the only difference between the two is, besides them uh, being, a, you know, a joined together with the same uh, method using shot cordage, uh, like the um, Axis or the Axis Elite, is that the angle of the additional magazine or the attached magazine is very aggressive on the Pro Flex. The reason that this one actually came to be is Scott J Jelinski of Modern Samurai Project uh, collaborated with Jared of Tier 1 Concealed uh, in order to bring this to life, okay? So uh, if you've never taken a class or ever met Scott in person, uh, Scott's a big guy, okay? The fact that he is a uh, black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu just scares me. Um, he's just a very large statured guy. He looks like a real-life samurai from a movie, okay? He's just He's just large and in charge, if you will, right? A great guy, though, um, and a phenomenal instructor. If you ever get a chance to take a class with him, I highly recommend it. You know, one of the things he will say is that because he's a larger guy, he should be able to get away with carrying a larger gun. And he'll tell you that 
his belief is, is that you should be able to, or strive to achieve to carry the largest gun that you can. Obviously, you know, that's just how he feels about it, but this particular style of holster that he was carrying at the time um, had a very large wedge on it. And I'll actually demonstrate some different wedges in just a second and how that affects the angle of the holster. Uh, but that was the way that he was able to achieve what he wanted to do, all right? I've never seen a holster setup you know, configuration the way that he had during the class. I wish I had a picture of it. But um, essentially what he's done is the people that like to carry larger lights, like the Surefire X300, the Mod Light PL350, this particular holster is designed around the light and not necessarily the gun. So your retention is around the light itself. So, uh, for example, this is a Glock 17. Um, the gun that he was running in the course was a Glock 17 with a compensator, a Surefire X300, uh, and he was running a... Terran Tactical Plus 5 base pad on a Glock 17 magazine for his spare mag. Now what he does is he angles his magazine uh, very aggressively to the left of the belly, if you will, and that's the reason he was able to conceal the way that he does. So anyway, that is the biggest benefit to this particular holster is if you are more light dependent and you really rely on a specific light and that is the light that you run on all your guns, this may be a good consideration for you. Or if you are, you know, a larger guy with the benefit uh, of a wedge, you may not need a wedge, but I would recommend it. Uh, again, we'll talk about that here soon. This may be a good fit for you in regards to that. Now, one of the things that I personally like to do before I apply any wedge to my holster is I apply uh, some Velcro uh, to my holsters. So as you can see here, I've got the soft side of Velcro, which is also known as a uh, loop uh, or also female Velcro. All right. Now, there's a particular brand that I personally like to use, uh, which is industrial strength Velcro. Um, if you buy it in these larger boxes, it'll come in like rolls. Um, it, it is going to come with both uh, your male and female Velcro. Uh, you can pick this up at Costco, Walmart, um, you know, a multitude of other retail stores, um, hardware stores, and so forth. But um, in regards to actual uh, wedges, I find that it is a little bit easier to use these pre-packaged, pre-cut uh, portions because it, you know, it's going to come with both your male and female Velcro, uh, and it's just in a smaller package, so it does make it easier to um, cut and apply these, um, you know, as you need them. Okay, so again, just personal preference. Uh, the reason is um, that I prefer to use Velcro is, for example, I may choose to go with a small wedge and realize that once I get this on, depending on maybe the firearm that I'm carrying, you know, this isn't enough to help me with concealment, so I need to go up. The thing that you need to keep in mind is that uh, on these wedges, all right, uh, believe me, you've been warned. Once you peel this off and you attach this to a holster uh, or any surface, uh, this thing becomes like a crazy ex-girlfriend, okay? It's going to stick around for a lot longer than you want her to, uh, and it's going to take some effort to get her out of your life, okay? You know, once you apply these to a holster, it's, it's a done deal, okay? And you're going to destroy this getting this off, and this stuff really adheres, um, you know, to the surface, okay? So by prepping my wedges the way that I've done, I uh, have now given me the ability to obviously use them on a multitude of different different configurations or different holsters, um, you know, down the road. I can lend these to friends so that they can determine which size that they, that they need to order for their own specific builds uh, and so forth, okay? So uh, another example is, as you can see here, I've got a light bearing holster. This is for the Mod Light PL350. Now, it sticks up ever so slightly above the actual gun holster itself. And so, for example, I may want to run a... Uh, we'll slap this extra large on the gun side here. I may want to run this large one here, and I may want to run a large on the opposite side where the actual, um, where the light actually goes, okay? So that's just an option, um, or obviously I could go over here and build a completely larger size wedge um, using a wide and a narrow one, okay? So that way I have a complete wedge system all the way across. Again, using this type of methodology when it comes to applying your wedges, um, you know, you've really got a lot of options. All right guys, so for this next 
part of the video, I had to get the help of my assistant, Tactical Tummy Tom. So welcome to the stage, Tactical Tummy Tom. Say that three times really quickly. Uh, as you guys can see here on the bottom, I've got a groove belt. It was the only belt that I had that uh, had an, uh, a, enough elasticity uh, to be able to get around the actual um, mannequin as well as the pillow. Uh, but give me just a second. Once I actually get this on uh, and a gun on it, I'll actually bring in the GoPro so you guys can see different angles. Now that I've actually got the uh, holster set up here on the belt, just a few things to keep in mind, guys. Um, obviously, uh, this is not how a, a person wears their, their belt as well as their holster. You know, it would actually sit much lower uh, if I had a full-size mannequin to actually make this happen, but uh, you guys get the point of it. And uh, again, I'll actually bring in uh, the GoPro to show the side angles uh, so you can see the benefits of the wedges that once they're applied. Uh, without them and of course with the wedges uh, but you know even if I was to be able to drop this belt line down further um, with the holster based on the size of the stomach it would actually uh, cause this to protrude even further outward and so again that's the reason why the larger usually the person's stomach is they have to go up in the size of the wedges uh, traditionally speaking. All right, so now looking through the eye of the GoPro, you guys can see here that um, obviously without the wedge system, you can see how much uh, of a, an aggressive cant uh, that this ends up creating. So um, let me actually grab a uh, Glock 17. This is with the uh, ModLite PL350. And once I actually use this, you guys can see now how much more of a problem that causes for people with larger stomachs okay so again this is um, more on the extreme side but this will uh, be a great demonstration uh, for those who have never used a wedge system uh, and so forth so let me actually go ahead and grab some wedges we'll put these on there and take another look now for this demonstration, what I actually had to do is I had to move not only the belt, but the holster up um, higher on the quote tummy, the tactical tummy um, here on the pillow for demonstration purposes. Um, how it was set up before, there was nothing pushing against the wedge, so obviously it wouldn't work properly. Uh, but what I've done now is um, I've applied an extra large wedge to it. And I've also changed the position of this camera. So you may not be able to see as much of a variation in the actual cant, uh, but let me actually show you here through the eye of the GoPro and you should be able to see a substantial difference, right? Um, obviously, um, most people aren't gonna be able uh, to get away with carrying an extended plus five base pad, uh, but that's not the reason for this. This is just to show you how much of a difference that that cant actually makes once you apply the appropriate size of wedge uh, to your holster, especially for those that have a larger gut, okay? Uh, so again, I hope that this helps you in making your decision in ordering the proper uh, additional accessories for your tier one concealed holster. Now moving on to the topic of clips. So when you're building your holster, you've got several different options, okay, when it comes to clips. And you may not be aware of maybe some of the benefits of some of these. And so I wanted to kind of talk about this and cover this subject very quickly. This is the standard traditional clip um, when you are ordering a holster. This is what most people know uh, and are comfortable with, okay? So as we see here on this um, holster, this is the newer hardware, uh, which these clips are adjustable. Uh, these are 1.75 inch clips. These are the standard clips. Uh, if you select the standard clips when building your holster, these will obviously fit anything from a one and a half inch uh, belt to a 1.75. Um, if you prefer to run the thicker, this is a 1.75 inch core belt, uh, gun belt. Uh, it just means that these are going to be uh, snug on there when you actually get them on. Okay, but these will absolutely work with no issues with a 1.5. Okay, now moving on to the second most uh, popular clip, which is called the discrete carry concept clip uh, or the DCC clips. Okay, uh, this is just a smaller version of it. Uh, and you can see here, that little piece of metal that comes down in the center there is called a cloth grabber, all right? Now, if you're unfamiliar with where these kind of came from, they actually got their start in the knife community, okay? Um, I, I really enjoy collecting uh, fixed blade knives and I carry them from time to time. 
But if you look at these, you'll notice that one of the biggest common denominators is that they all feature a discrete carry concept clip um, or a version of it, okay? So um, these work very, very well. Uh, and essentially, once you apply these to whatever material uh, that, you know, whatever that you're using, whether they're board shorts, whether they're just pants without using a belt, um, you know, sweatpants, those types of things. Uh, as you go to deploy a gun or a knife, the, the actual sheath itself stays in place, okay? It's, it's not coming off unless you absolutely want it to uh, because of uh, how well uh, the actual cloth grabber system is designed, okay? So one of the things that I do want to mention is obviously with every pro, there is a con, okay? So because these things work so well, one of the things that you may experience uh, when it comes to uh, using these particular types of clips on your holster uh, is some premature wear on your actual belt. So let me actually show you mine. Now, this is my personal core belt. Um, I've been running this particular belt for roughly about a year. And um, obviously, other than what I'm going to show you here, there's really no premature signs of wear of any kind. Okay. Uh, so if I was actually uh, standing here, the belt would actually be positioned like this. Um, I actually move my belt buckle to the left of the first um, belt loop itself so that that way I have this entire area here dedicated strictly to my holster located on the back right hand side which is where uh, my right hip is is typically where I will carry a fixed blade okay so as you can see here I've got some premature wearing of the belt um, it is not due to the um, a failure of the material itself but in fact due to the uh, damage that is caused by these discrete carry concept clips, okay? Um, again, this is just food for thought. These things work so well, uh, but because of the strength of how, just how strong these clips are, what happens is as I go to pull these clips out or these, um, uh, the clip away from the actual sheath itself and pull the sheath out at the end of the day. Um, sometimes the cloth grabber itself will grab the very top part of the uh, edge of the belt and that's what will cause this, uh, this cutting and, and of course the fraying of that. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll just trim it with a knife and I'll just take a lighter and just kind of uh, uh, burn that down to kind of keep it from uh, continuing to keep spreading, okay? So again, it's just food for thought, things to kind of keep in mind. Uh, these things over time, especially over an extended period of time, will absolutely and prematurely wear down um, any kind of cloth uh, or material that these things kind of come into contact with. Uh, your leather is definitely going to stand up a lot better to wear against these particular types of clips. But I will say that if you have the types of belts that are very thin like this one, again, I don't recommend this belt or a belt this thin. But if you typically run thin belts uh, for concealment, you're probably going to want to carry a discrete carry concept clip uh, because what happens is the larger clips, the standard clips, sometimes can come off of this really thin belt prematurely. And so you're going to want something that's going to guarantee you a much more secure fit uh, like the DCC clips, uh, again, if you run a very thin belt. And lastly, but probably the least uh, popular out of the uh, options that you've got is called the uh, Ulti Clip. Uh, now, this particular clip was designed, it's kind of a competitor, if you will, to the discrete carry concept clips. You can see there it has somewhat of a similar cloth grabber, uh, but it works differently with using a hinge uh, system to put pressure against the actual clip and the material. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, I just grab some, um, you know, basketball shorts, if you will. How these actually work is once they are applied, very similar to the discrete carry concept clips, once you actually push down on this piece here, it locks it into place, okay? So this is going to prevent this from coming off uh, or the holster coming off prematurely as you go to deploy knife or gun. Okay, um, again, the problem with these particular style of clips is that they are designed to work strictly without the belt. Okay, so here's what happens is people will go with a style of clip like this, then once they get these uh, attached to their 
you know, their holster of their choice, and then they go to put a belt on top of it. This ends up forcing the belt out uh, away from the actual pants. And so sometimes it can actually cause some printing of the belt um, over the actual holster itself. So those are just some kind of things to keep in mind. I also find these very difficult, and sometimes I have to use like a flathead screwdriver in order to open these things sometimes uh, because of how these are just designed. Um, so again, those are just some things to keep in mind in regards to uh, these particular style of clips. Now, over the past few years, I've had the privilege of not only testing a variety of different holsters from Tier 1 Concealed, but I've had the privilege of testing those for a variety of different gun manufacturers on the market. Now, with that being said, I'm sure that you can imagine that I get a lot of questions, not only from my YouTube channel, but from my Instagram page, just asking a variety of questions. One of the things that I wanted to do is take this opportunity to answer some of those more frequently asked questions, but I wanted to actually reach out to the team at Tier 1 Concealed and actually get their input as well. With all of that being said, I actually have four of some of the most commonly asked questions directly from you guys, and so I want to take this opportunity to answer those. Question number one, if I order a light bearing holster, can I run my gun independently in that holster without the weapon light being attached to it? Now the short answer is going to be no, but there is a solution to that, so bear with me for just a moment. So as you can see here, I've got a light bearing holster. Uh, this is actually for the CZ P10 Compact with a Surefire X300, okay? Now when this holster was made, it was made for the retention to be designed directly around the weapon light itself, okay? So as you can see here, the retention is there. If I remove the weapon light itself and go to insert the gun, there is no retention, okay? So obviously this can create a safety hazard. Um, you want to make sure that you have the proper retention uh, and there's no way, no matter how tight uh, that I screw this retention screw in, it's not going to be enough to retain this gun safely. Now, as I mentioned before, Tier 1 Concealed actually makes a solution to that called the Combo Pack. It is actually built off the Aegis platform, all right? So that gives you the ability not only to run the gun independently of the magazine, but with the combination pack, you have the ability to run the gun with a light or without a light, depending on how you want to run it and when you want to run it at your convenience. Question number two, do you make a holster for X gun? Uh, the answer to that is actually going to be on their website. So when you go to the website and you're placing your order, there's going to be some drop down boxes uh, that you're going to select the make and model of your gun. And if you're going to be ordering a light bearing holster, uh, you'll have an option to select which make and model of light that you're wanting it to be attached to. Now, if you don't see anything populate in that uh, for what you're specifically wanting to order, then that means that they actually don't make a mold or a holster for you at this time. Now, just because they don't make it at this time does not mean that they won't make it in the future. There's a small part of me that wishes that they had a custom department for those specific uh, types of builds, but the reality is, is they actually make those particular molds not only in-house, but they make them using the particular uh, gun as well as the light that you're actually ordering uh, to actually make that mold. So the reason they do this is because people that have used blue guns uh, historically in the past, as those molds are being made, the uh, material of the blue gun starts to break down over time. So you can start to have inconsistencies in your molding process. So when the holster is actually being made, they actually test fit it with that particular gun or that gun and light combo in that particular holster before it leaves the manufacturing floor. That just helps Tier 1 Concealed guarantee a higher level of quality assurance. Question number three, what is the difference between the Axis and the Axis Elite? So if you've actually not watched this video in its entirety, I actually cover those in great detail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the timestamp uh, directly here on the screen, but I'm gonna put a hyperlink uh, to that particular part of the review down below. So that way you guys can actually click on that and go directly to that section where I talk about that in detail. And last but not least, question number four. What is the difference between Alpha and Bravo configuration? Because I didn't answer this earlier in the video, I've actually recorded a separate video directly answering these questions where I do a side-by-side -side comparison and I talk about some of the pros and cons. Enjoy. Next up, I'm going to be answering one of the most commonly asked questions when ordering a Tier 1 Concealed either Aegis or Aegis Elite holster, which is what is the difference between the Alpha and the Bravo configuration? So first up, let me just focus on the alpha configuration. 
which is what I have here. You'll notice that there is a clip located on the holster side and a clip located on the magazine carrier side. So if I detach these two at my convenience, this gives me the ability to run each independently of the other. You'll notice also too, there's a very large space in between these two. Uh, this is also for those that prefer to run their belts uh, or their belt buckle in the front, okay? In between both clips. Now, here's some food for thought, guys. If you're running something very thin, even though that I don't recommend, uh, or most leather belts, if you're running something like this groove belt that has a very thin buckle, um, I don't actually recommend this uh, for concealed carry. It's just my preference. I had to buy this one after my last back surgery because of where the incision was. I couldn't wear a regular belt. If you're running something really thin like this, this isn't gonna really present uh, much of an issue when you're running this one in between both clips, okay? It's still gonna lay very flat. As a matter of fact, this will lay flatter than your actual clips themselves, okay? Where the alpha configuration uh, uh, or this particular configuration when you're running a belt in the front becomes an issue is if you're running something like the Core Essentials belts or some of the other belt buckles that are really thick. When this actually happens, uh, you do start to have a little bit of an issue, in my opinion, in my experience, of the buckle actually printing more than the actual gun and holster itself. So that's just some food for thought. Now switching over to the Bravo configuration where I feel that this is more of a benefit is when you're running heavier guns. Now some people may not feel like that this is a heavier setup, but based on what I typically run, this one is much heavier. If you take a look at the CZ P07s, the P09s, uh, your Staccatos, some of your other 1911s, you know, those are heavier guns. So if you want to run the holster independently more uh, as a standalone holster, without the actual magazine carrier, the Bravo configuration is gonna be a better fit because now when these two are apart, you have more stability, in my opinion, carrying your heavier gun, okay? Again, that is just my personal opinion. Now, obviously you can't run this independently as it is. However, when you order a Bravo configuration, uh, you can see here, this one came with an extra set of screws. So if I wanted to, I could take this uh, clip off of here and actually put it on here and now I have an alpha configuration. Again, it's all personal preference, but if you are ordering these so that you can separate this and most of the time only carry the gun and you carry a heavier firearm, the Bravo configuration is gonna be a better fit for you. All right, guys, so that is gonna be a wrap here on today's video review of the Versus 2.0. I wanna thank you guys so very much for taking the time to come spend it here with me on the channel. Uh, if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, turn your bell notification on. That way, when you are notified via email, you guys can pick and choose which videos uh, that you're interested in watching. And to my subscribers, I wanna thank you guys so very much from the bottom of my heart. As I always say, your support, it truly does mean the world to me. Until that next video, guys, take care. Be safe.